Way back in 350 BCE, Aristotle developed his ideas about the modes of persuasion, which organize into three distinct categories the potential for a speaker's appeal to an audience. To summarize this topic, a brief quote from Aristotle about his ideas. Of the modes of persuasion furnished by the spoken word, there are three kinds. Persuasion is achieved by the speaker's personal character when the speech is so spoken as to make us think him credible. Secondly, persuasion may come through the hearers when the speech stirs their emotions. Thirdly, persuasion is affected through the speech itself when we have proved a truth or an apparent truth by means of the persuasive arguments suitable to the case in question. More simply put, we will be briefly examining ethos, an ethical appeal, pathos, an emotional appeal, and logos, a logical appeal. Let's start by defining ethos. Ethos is the Greek word for character, so it's persuading by the character of the author. Um, ethos includes factors like establishing credibility, respectability, likability of the speaker or author, um, the author's reputation independent of the message, are they an accepted authority on this subject, and within the message, it's things like attention to grammar, spelling, citing sources, etc. that establish credibility. A good question to ask yourself with ethos is, does the author have credibility or authority? It's just a good guideline to check if this is an ethical appeal that's being made. So what does ethos look like for a graphic designer? What details do you see in this patch that seek to establish the sense of authority or strong reputation of this company? Notice how many claims are made in this image on this patch. Original, quality, trademark, the patent, and the date it was patented. This patch is loaded with references to the credibility of the company and the product. The use of celebrity spokespeople constitutes an ethical appeal. They're borrowing an authority or expert on the subject, someone whose reputation precedes them, to speak on the topic. Many times in advertising, the expert status of the spokesperson is questionable at best, and the relationship is a stretch. This particular example is noteworthy on multiple levels. First, Lance Armstrong, as a cancer survivor, is certainly a credible spokesperson on the topic of cancer, and his status as a seven-time Tour de France winner establishes his authority as someone who quote-unquote lives strong. However, Armstrong's doping ac accusations and his subsequent removal from the record books as the tour winner demonstrate how credibility can change over time, affecting the credibility of the companies or products with which the star is associated. The good housekeeping seal of approval is a sought-after mark of quality for many home-related products that display a level of acceptance by a kind of accrediting body. Displaying the seal on your product implies that it's a cut above the competition. An interesting note about the design of this logo is that the large black and white mark is actually the newest version, and the blue and red mark is the previously designed version. Even the seal of approval needs to maintain a look of authority by reverting to an old-fashioned look and asserting how long they've been around. Extrinsic ethos is the reputation or character of the author that precedes the author. It's based on prior knowledge and or assumptions that we make about the author. A good test of extrinsic ethos is to ask yourself, based on what I've already seen or heard about this person, product, or experience, or thing, how credible does it seem? Again, extrinsic ethos relies on previous knowledge, a previous understanding of the author. Intrinsic ethos is the impression created by the text itself when you encounter it. So in this situation, you should ask yourself, 
what was the quality or reliability of the product or experience that I encountered once I came across this text. Pathos is Greek for suffering or experience. It's persuading by appealing to our emotions. This is done through several ways. Uh, one, the use of strong, clever, vivid, or emotional use of language. Uh, also by generating a sense of sympathy with the subject. It's achieved by conjuring one's imagination. And also by using sensory details, like showing detailed visuals or highly rich visuals, describing smells, or using sound to create a sense of place in a piece. A good question to ask yourself with pathos is, does the message connect with me emotionally? It's just a good gauge to see if pathos is the primary mode of, of appeal. So what does pathos look like in graphic design? This anti-Vietnam poster from the Art Workers Coalition used sensory details, like I mentioned before, blood red type, and a very simple question and answer format to create an emotional, a strongly emotional appeal, appeal for the viewer. The use of photography, as opposed to something like illustration, which is much more subjective, also establishes credibility or ethos and truthful, truthfulness, logos, for this piece, making it really hard to argue against the cold hard facts of the photography. Sex sells clearly in this ad, and it does constantly in many ads. And this ad for Calvin Klein underwear is definitely not attempting to use the good housekeeping seal of approval to gain credibility. Pathos is not just about shock imagery, but about generating sympathy with the subject. So emotional language and typeface choice is also used here, but in an encouraging and friendly way. Pathos is emotional, regardless of what that emotion might be. Logos is Greek for word. It is persuading through the use of reasoning and logic. Logos is about making clear statements and giving logical reasons and factual evidence to back up one's claims. A good question to ask yourself in this situation is, is the message based on facts, evidence, or logic? So what does Logos look like in graphic design? This is a detail from Taxonomy of Logos Within the Publishing Industry, uh, designed by Nicholas Felton. It is really simply recording and organizing data gathered from Felton's research. It's just statements of fact here. This book cover, designed by the British firm Bibliotech, it simply puts the facts of the contents on the cover. Another example from Nicholas Felton, from his Feltron annual report, which are quite popular, uh, this piece documents the date, time, and number of photos taken through the course of one year. The text below the main chart uh, details a range of significant facts about the photos that were taken. You'll find that many examples of graphic design employ multiple modes of persuasion to great impact, and that's the case with this classic activist example from the Gorilla Girls. It not only display, displays an outlandish image to make a point about sexism in the art world, but it also backs it up with a hard fact. The main takeaway from this lecture is that there are multiple ways to visually and verbally appeal to your audience, and each has its own unique qualities and therefore is effective in its own way. Graphic designers can and should capitalize on this long-standing knowledge from the realm of public speaking and then adapt it to communicate with audiences in a range of ways and then foreground a particular approach that makes the strongest connection to your audience.